During last Friday's question, I mentioned using a one size smaller master cone than your master file when obturating calcified or narrow canals. Well, many of you called me out on this and then asked, wouldn't a smaller size master cone uh, than a master file simply sail out of the root canal? Well, that's a really valid concern and leads to the question of what is the resistance form during root canal preparation? Well, let's take a look at it. Over a hundred years ago, Dr. G.B. Black, the father of operative dentistry, described some cavity preparation principles, the essence uh, of which is still uh, remaining today. Well, he coined a few different terms, including the retention form, the resistance form, as well as the convenience form, and some other terms uh, that are still true today. For example, in a class two amalgam preparation, the resistance form, uh, according to Dr. Black, was considered the minimum preparation width that protects the amalgam from fracture. In endodontics, however, resistance form is something else. It's basically that aspect of the canal preparation design that maintains the obturation material inside the root canal and prevents it from extruding and extending into the periapical tissues. Depending on the obturation technique that you use, you may have learned a different instrumentation technique to accompany it. For example, if you're using lateral condensation, the resistance form is considered the apical stop. Here, your master file should terminate uh, well inside the root canal, ideally at the cemento dentinal junction, so that the file never actually leaves the canal um, with having good length control. As a result, you maintain your apical constriction and have patency only to a size 10 or, you know, really maximum a size 15 hand file through this constriction. The goal here is to have your resistance form be a dead stop for the master cone at the apex, which then prevents it from sailing out past the apex. People often describe this shape as the shape of the Washington Monument, and that's true. Uh, it comes down to a very uh, uh, sharp stop at the tip, and that is your apical stop. This technique was popularized by endodontic pioneers such as uh, doctors um, um, Wine, Seltzer, Bender, Grossman, Walton, and, and some others. In lateral condensation, your preparation would end up being about a half a millimeter from the radiographic apex, and you provide adequate taper to fit a spreader to the apical three to five millimeter of the root for compaction. This obturation technique and instrumentation technique is probably the one that is most popular uh, globally. In vertical compaction, however, the recommended instrumentation is a little bit different. This technique was popularized by Dr. Herb Schilder of Boston University, and the canal is instrumented to the radiographic terminus to a size 20 and is then gradually stepped back from that length. This gradual taper creates a resistance form based on the tug back and the cone fit with the tug back that is at the apical three to five millimeter of the root. So your tug back basically is creating a tight fit at the apex that prevents your cone from extruding through the friction with the canal walls at that last few millimeters of the root. So that you have a cone fit at the apical three to five millimeters, which you then burn off and backfill in vertical compactions, a uh, specific technique of, uh, you know, backfilling. But an unfortunate side effect of the instrumentation to the radiographic terminus, which is that which is, prov uh, you know, promoted by vertical condensation, uh, means that you basically end up instrumenting some of the cases uh, long because the apical constriction is usually not at the radiographic terminus, but according to histological studies, it is slightly short of that. Anyway, this disagreement between these two instrumentation camps over the issue of the apex and at is it the radiographic terminus or a half a millimeter short of that were, were basically ideological differences akin to the, uh, you know, Europe's hundred year wars. Uh, figuratively speaking, uh, there was a lot of bloodshed over only a half a millimeter. So people on both sides spent most of the 70s and 80s fighting over this concept with martyrs on both sides of the argument. In the 1990s, uh, some people basically took uh, this whole thing up a notch and began to advocate to instrument the apex using 
sizes larger than even a size 20 hand file and even some people talked about getting uh, taking a size 35 rotary instrument a couple of millimeters past the radiographic terminus just to confirm that everything is clean. Well, these folks basically uh, were talking about completely zipping through the constriction and leaving an open apex. And uh, by some people, they were, you know, termed the apical barbarians. So in an ideal world, this would not be a problem. Um, but when you consider the fact that the area of a circle enlarges by the square of its diameter, you then can kind of understand that blowing through the apex at larger sizes will certainly create an obturation nightmare. And that's even if you ignore the potential for postoperative pain by the patient. Anyway, uh, at this point, there were too many techniques and solutions and opinions. These uh, opinions and, uh, and, 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 and solutions were uh, all over the endodontic field, and there were basically a dime a dozen. And of course, this includes uh, this opinion that you're about to hear. But as, as, as a sidebar, I just wanted to uh, tell you that my training at the Midwest at Northwestern University with lateral condensation influence and then later on at the uh, Harvard uh, University under the vertical compaction influence here in Boston uh, and my clinical experience in several years after graduation, I very quickly realized that both techniques worked the vast majority of time and that the success rate with these techniques were not really significantly altered with either instrumentation. The key, however, was just adequate disinfection and the war of, you know, compaction and instrumentation and lengths were really just the, you know, a war of wards and egos. So when Rebuild Endo developed a simpler obturation technique, first using originally a glass sealer with active GP and then the biceramic sealer with the BC sealer hydraulic condensation technique, we never really uh, fully described the resistance form that we advocate. So let's go back at the original question. What's the resistance form for a smaller cone not to, um, you know, um, get out the apex? Well, as you basically listen to the history that I described and everything I said, it really has to do with your own personal instrumentation philosophy, and that's why I explain all that stuff. So if you use a one size smaller master cone and have an apical stop patent only to a size 10 or 15 file, then you really don't have to worry about using a smaller cone uh, with your stop because the, the, your apical stop will prevent that smaller size cone from slipping out anyway. But if you use a patency technique with a larger file, or if you simply just don't pay attention, enough attention to your working length and you're perforating the apex left and right uh, and even to larger sizes, then you really have to cone fit your cone prior to obturation. This means that if you are, for example, instrumenting a canal to a size um, 35 and the canal length is 20 millimeters and then you want to fill it with a size 30, then prior to cementation of your size 30 and putting the sealer in the canal, you really should be fitting your size 30 cone and making sure that it doesn't really go deeper than the 20 millimeters that was your original working length. And if it does go deeper, then you have to trim the tip uh, accordingly using a scalpel, which is basically your cone fitting 101, just fitting the cone to the full length. Either way, pre-fitting your cone prior to obturation is something that you should be doing, whether you're using the uh, you know, same size cone or, uh, or one size smaller or even two size smaller. You should always pre-fit your cones. And this brings us to the question of working length and length control, which is going to be the topic of next week's uh, Friday questions because it's really a, an important one that we all need to address. In conclusion, no matter what instrumentation technique you use and what size cones you use to obturate any canal, just make sure that you pre-fit the master cone prior to the, its placement uh, in the canal uh, with the sealer and prior to its cementation to make sure that the, uh, the depth of its seating is to the full working length and not longer and certainly not shorter either. Once again, don't forget to post your questions in the forum area of our website, as I will not be able to answer all the questions in the different social uh, media feeds that we share this content through. And speaking of which, make sure you join us on all those outlets at Rewildendo, and also become a member of our website for free, and where you can uh, watch future content that we're going to be posting, and also maybe get our newsletter. For Rewildendo, I'm Ali Nese, and I hope you found this information helpful.